Okay, let's get started. The first trick that I'm going to show you is the two fingers keyboard trackpad feature on the iPad. Let's say if you are typing a note, hi, how are you? And you want to get to the spot between, let's say, how and are. Usually people will just tap onto that spot in order to get there and start editing that part of the text. But if the text is too small and if you have, let's say, a really big paragraph, it's really hard to pinpoint the spot. And now you can use the keyboard as a trackpad in order to move that cursor around. All you need to do is to use two fingers, tap onto the keyboard. Don't tap and hold because it will highlight the text instead of dragging the cursor. So just slide your fingers across and you'll see that all the letters disappeared. And I now am moving the cursor using my two fingers on the keyboard like this. It doesn't only move left and right and also moves up and down basically any direction, but I just don't have anything underneath the first line. So I'm just going to go, I am fine. So here I can drag up and down, left and right, basically anywhere, almost like using an actual trackpad. So this is very, very convenient to get to the spot that you want. One thing you can do besides the two fingers, let's say if you just it's really inconvenient for you to use two fingers is you can use your thumb to tap and hold on to the space bar. It will work the same. Just like that. This is what I use all the time in order to move the cursor around instead of using my finger to try to like pinpoint a spot and tap onto the screen. The second keyboard trick that I want to show you guys is the three fingers hold to undo and redo which is something that I discovered like accidentally. It didn't like show up or as a tip on the iPad, but I found out while I was trying to prepare for this video. So let's say if you're typing something, I am fine, thank you. Let's say like that. And you want to undo whatever that you just type in the past, usually what people do and what I will usually do is to carry the device or bring up the device and start shaking the device until it says undo. See, it takes so long. It doesn't even like allow me to do undo until I shake the iPad super violently. So I don't know who designed this, but see, I'm shaking it like a lot and it's not doing what I'm hoping it to do. So this is really, really frustrating. Now what you can do is you can use three fingers, tap and hold onto the screen and you will know why. You see that there is a new option called undo, cut, copy, paste and redo. This is amazing. I figured this out like accidentally. I don't know how I did it, but it's just three fingers, tap and hold onto the screen. In order to undo, it's actually really easy. You don't need to use your second finger or another hand to tap onto that. You just need to drag your three fingers and you see that this undo button is being filled. Once it's completely filled, you can just release and it will undo and remove that period right there at the end of the sentence. I can do it again and it will remove more stuff. In order to redo is the opposite. Three finger hold, you can see that the redo button is being filled and it will redo the next step. And if there's nothing to redo or undo, you can see that the button is being grayed out. You can try to do it, but it's not going to happen. And you can continue typing. Even when the keyboard is out, you can do it as well. It's exactly the same method. And you can actually go pretty fast. So this is way better than like shaking the iPad or your iPhone. Yes, it works on iPhone too. Let me show you, which is really amazing. So on the iPhone, I have the exact same note here. And let's say I typed in, thank you. And I want to undo what I just typed in the past. Again, you shake your device until hopefully the thing, see? It takes me like five seconds to just to get this undo button out. So that's super annoying. Now you can use three fingers again, three fingers, not two, not four, three fingers, tap and hold. You will see the exact same option bar at the top right there. And all you need to do is to drag it to the left to undo, drag it to the left, undo, drag it to the right, 
to redo, drag it to the right to redo. This is absolutely amazing. Of course, this is different because you will have to use like two hands pretty much, but I think this is still better than like having to shake your phone like super violently to get the option out. So that's a really, really handy trick that I found out on the iPad keyboard. The next feature I want to talk about is to how to move the keyboard from the bottom of your screen. There are two more options. This is called the dock mode. Another mode, which is pretty common in the past already, which is a split mode. All you need to do is to use two fingers and drag outward. The keyboard will split up and float on your iPad screen, kind of at the bottom, middle, bottom. But if you want to move this split up keyboard, all you need to do is to tap and hold the, to the keyboard key at the bottom right, and you can drag it up and down. Once you drag it all the way to the bottom, it will go back to one keyboard because this is now attached to what they call the dock at the bottom, and it will get back to one keyboard. Of course, if you don't want to drag it all the way to the bottom and you still want it to become one keyboard, you just need to pinch with two fingers. Now the keyboard is kind of in the middle and this is kind of weird, so I'll always drag it back down to the bottom. That's the split mode. Another mode which is kind of new to the iPad is the float mode. So the keyboard, if it's too big, sitting in the middle of the screen, especially if you have an iPad mini like myself, the screen is blocked by the keyboard, like half of the screen. So what you can do is you can pinch with your finger and now you have a smaller keyboard that you can actually move around. You can use one finger to type or I don't know how you would type with two fingers this way, but you can. Um, there is gonna be a smaller keyboard that is not gonna block the majority of the screen. In order to move this keyboard, you just need to tap and hold on to this bar. And this is actually a little bit more flexible because it floats around the keyboard. You can, I mean, the screen of your iPad, you can pretty much put it anywhere you want. So this is super convenient. The only thing is sometimes it's just on one side and you're typing with one finger or one hand, which is gonna slow down the process of typing. So in order to go back to the big keyboard, just spread your fingers. So it's pinch to get to the float mode, spread your finger to go back to the full keyboard mode. If you can't remember any of the gestures, let's say the split, pinch and zoom in, zoom out kind of gesture, you can actually get into those modes by tapping and holding onto the keyboard key. This is usually for you to hide the keyboard, right? But if you tap and hold onto this key right here, you can see that there's undock, split and floating. So undock means you can move the full keyboard up and down like this. I don't know why you would do that. Maybe you have something that you want to type at the bottom, but I don't know why you would do that usually. And of course, split mode is split mode. This one right here, again, tap and, whoops, tap and drag the keyboard up and down. If you tap and hold again, you have floating, which is a small one. The only awkward thing is you lost the keyboard key where you can change the different modes here. So you have to remember to spread your fingers to get back to the full keyboard in order to have the full keyboard. So this is how you can use the keyboard in dock mode, split mode, and float mode. The last trick that I want to show you guys on the iPad keyboard is the shortcut or the text shortcut that you can create when you are typing on the iPad. Let's say you have a phrase or something that you always type and you don't want to type the whole sentence or the or the entire paragraph, maybe, then you can go into your settings of your iPad, go into general and look for keyboard, tap onto keyboard and there is text replacement. By default, there is one built in already so you can kind of get the idea. So here, if I type in OMW, it will say on my way with the exclamation mark, but you can actually customize your own, which is really handy. So let's say, here I have the plus sign at the top right. I'm adding a new phrase and new shortcut. So phrase is the whole thing, the whole sentence, and shortcut is the shortcut key. Let's say um, I want to type, how are you? With the question mark, 
this is the actual sentence I want people to see. And for shortcut, I can go just the initials, H-A-Y, H-A-Y, and it will type out how are you when I type in H-A-Y. Just be careful if you put in like a common word or an actual word, then it will confuse the device and it will just stick with the actual word. Let's say you type in H-E-Y, that's an actual word, then it will not type out the phrase for you. So H-A-Y, tap on save. Now you have two phrases. This is the default one, and this is the one that I made. So let's go into the note app. Let's say I want to type out how are you instead of typing how are you like this, I can actually go H-A-Y. And it will suggest you if you want to type out how are you, you can tap onto this option to choose it, or you can just tap onto the space bar and it will type out the whole sentence or whole phrase for you and you can continue typing. So this is very, very handy if you have certain phrases that you always use, let's say for work or school that you always type out, let's say a, a signature or a company name or anything like that, this is very handy. So you don't have to type the whole thing out. If you have time, you can create multiple shortcuts and now you will become a more efficient iPad user. That said, those are the tips and tricks that I want to show you guys on the iPad and some work on the iPhone as well that I always use and that helps me to be a more efficient iPad and iPhone user. Let us know in the comment section below if you prefer having this iPad out kind of layout or if you prefer seeing the recorded iPad screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.